Hello everybody, welcome to this week's video. This week we're looking at the Mustang. Oh, let's skip over here, because it's on the side. Mach-E 4X. X. It's the, the E4, the 4X is all wheel drive. Uh, so this is the 2023, I should say. This is my first time in the Mach-E. Uh, I gotta say, excuse the crunch of the snow and the march of traffic on the street. Um, yeah, I like the way it looks. It looks good inside profile. It has that sloping roof there. Sort of gives it the uh, coupe SUV vibe that they got going on these days. Um, yeah, it's a handsome thing for sure. Uh, we're going to... I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to talk about some of the, the oddities of this car. It's sort of... They made some curious choices. Obviously, they were chasing Tesla when they were designing this thing, and it shows. It kind of shows all over. Uh, first thing I want to sort of touch on is are the door catches. Here, because here you have the button, if you will, and then that's your lock touch there, which does not light up in the dark, which is deeply irritating. Why couldn't you just backlight it? But that, you press the button, and the door unlocks. Super. Doesn't seem so bad. They give you this stupid little pull. And, or tab or whatever you want to call it instead of a door handle. Why couldn't you just give us a door handle? Whatever the loss is in aerodynamics, I will take it in exchange for a good old fashioned door handle. Because if you're in and out of the car constantly loading it up, whatever, blah, 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 that gets old real quick. And in the back, they don't even give you, a, forgive the reflection, they don't even give you the tab. You just hit the button and it opens. And that's fine. But why do we need the, comp the complexity? I know I'm bitching immediately, but there's a complexity to that, right? There's a little electric motor that releases a door, catches a door. If it had a handle, you just pull it open and then shut it. That would be great. This does not allow for that. I don't know why we have to make it that complicated. Is it because it's electric? Probably. Tesla creates fancy door handles. Ford says, nah, screw it. Let's do no door handles because we're better. Anyway, in the back, Curiously, you'll see that Mustang logo. It's all over the car, but there's only one Ford logo that I've seen on one of the screens, and that's it. Otherwise, this isn't even a Ford, apparently. It's just a Mustang. I'm not going to get into the whole, is it a Mustang, isn't a Mustang thing? That's for other people to debate. At least they gave it a name. They could have given it names or letters and numbers. Uh, so the trunk in the back here, a decent size, good for everyday shopping, etc. Underneath is a little spot for charging cable and Bits and pieces, no spare tire, of course, because EVs don't need spare tires. Not even emergency donuts. In the back, you get a better look at this little upper spoiler deal here. And the roof line really does taper quite a bit if you take it in from that perspective. It's uh, yeah, it's very sleek, I like it. Sort of shares design cues with the Mustang on the taillights, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, lots of plastic piano black on the outside. I mean, it's better than bare plastic for sure, but man, that's going to age poorly, I'll tell you. Um, well, let's go to the back seats, shall we? So how does that roof line affect rear headroom? Because that's always a concern with these little coupe-oriented SUVs. I got to say, it's really good. You get many inches. Well, not many, but like four inches. And I'm seated behind myself, got lots of leg room, etc. It's good back here, actually. There's a decent amount of space. So kudos, Ford. You did, you did well in that regard. You get your center console with cup holders, etc. Power in the back, vents, all that's good. I want to touch on this leather. I don't think it's actual leather. I think it's a synthetic. And I got to say, everywhere I touch, just run my hands all over this car. It's fabulous, actually. It's soft, uh, has a nice feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap. Some of these synthetic leathers, or whatever you want to call them, I don't like them at all. They feel very, very cheap, very much like a PVC. And this may be a PVC too, but they've done it right because it feels like a high quality soft leather. And I dig that, that's cool. Uh, something, here, hold on a sec. Oh, as I get out of the back seat. Another thing they've done, curiously, instead of in having a door pull, to open the door, you have this tab, which, you know, okay. It's weird. It's a very strange design, and I think it just goes back to the idea that everything on this thing has to be a little different. Well, certain things have to be a little different, and it's fine. Maybe I'm just complaining for the purposes of complaining, but I would have preferred just a regular door pull. Hasn't gotten in, in the way as much as that thing, but nevertheless. Okay, let's head to the front seat, shall we? Hold on, let's check the front. 
uh, it's one thing Ford does quite well with their EV, well, the two EVs that they have for sale. They give you a proper frunks. And this thing, you don't have to unlatch it, that's cool. You just pull that thing twice and it releases it, that's nice. You get, hey, look at that, another Mustang logo. Go figure, must be a Mustang. And this is your frunk. It's uh, actually a decent size, it's not token, which is cool. This is the drain plug, if I'm not mistaken. So Ford is advocating that you fill this with ice, load it up with beer, and have a horrendous accident, which I'm a big fan of. I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, and that's the frunk, isn't it? Two struts, by the way, so none of that pole nonsense, which is really cool. Sort of a uh, upgraded touch. And then front seat, let's have a look at the front seat because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. Uh, and I'd like to touch on it. Look at that here, let's watch this, shall we? Look at the graphic on this screen. It, it's quite the production. It's like the opening uh, title sequence in a film. You know what I mean? It's like the Universal logo. It's not done yet, just wait. And there we go. And now it'll sort of just sit there because I haven't actually started the car yet. One cool thing about this car is it has a proper start button. The EV trend these days is to have no start buttons. I don't know why, because it's nice to be able to turn the car on and off. If you're going to be idling, it's nice to have an on off button because then you can turn the car on or off, leave it idling, have the heat on if it's cold, if you're waiting for your children, blah, blah, blah. Volvos, I mean, you just, you, you never know if the damn thing's off or on. I don't understand the thought process behind that. But anyway, uh, this is the center screen. Is it 15 inches? I can't remember. It's freaking enormous. The It sort of speaks to how they were really chasing, let's turn the car on, shall we? Chasing Tesla when they were, you know, three, four years ago when they started designing. Oh, that bong. That's really irritating. I can't figure out how to turn it off. I'm sure it's in there somewhere because oh, there's, see, there's the Ford logo I was talking about. But other than that, I don't think it's anywhere else in this car. Now, of course, it'll turn up everywhere because I'm recording a video. But I did note how much Mustang there was versus Ford. Back to the task at hand. So this is your big screen. And immediately, you're struck by the fact that everything is on this screen. Everything. Your HVAC controls, your audio controls, etc. The center dial is kind of funny because it controls multiple things depending on what button you push. So if you hit that, you get your fan speed controls, etc. Let's turn that to one because it's cold. And then you get your your rear display, etc. That's your, your HVAC stuff is all here. That's fine. But when you are driving, and yes, this is a constant complaint, it is hard to hit those, those screen buttons. They're a little finicky and a regular tactile little strip right here just with regular buttons. Please stop this. This is not good, right? We don't want this. I, I get it. I know Tesla does it. That doesn't mean it's everybody else should do it. You know, that's something Hyundai did properly. They did, you know, they give you a big fancy screen. It's great, blah, blah, blah. But regular everyday stuff is in buttons, etc. So yeah, it's, it, and the kicker is it's been cold here recently. And I've had some problems getting the screen to fire up in a punctual fashion. So, you know, I'll be taking the kids to school or heading out for the day, whatever the case may be excuse me, and the car is cold and you can't fire up any of this stuff until the screen is on. And the screen took a full two minutes, I timed it, to actually, after I hit the start button, to, to turn on. So then you have to warm up the car. I know, bitching and moaning, but still, you know, like to tie in all this functionality to a screen that has three or four times been unreliable sort of illustrates the shortcomings of this design philosophy. It just just right here, right down at the bottom. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. It doesn't all have to be in here. I don't like it all in here. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, what's good about the screen, it's high def. The cameras attached to it are, are equally high def. The 360 stuff is good. Uh, everything is filthy right now because it's it just snowed, as you can see, uh, recently here. So it's salt and muck all over. So the cameras are obscured anyway. But when they're clean, they're great. Uh, it's a good system. The screen is big. Uh, most of the functionality is fine. Almost everything related to the car is in here somewhere. I haven't found it all yet and I never will because I'm old and I just I can't track it all down. But it is all in here uh, and the, the interface is good. It's nice. My wife was deeply impressed by the size of this thing. Okay, you know, I don't need all of this. I would prefer something smaller with some better functionality attached to it, but whatever, that's fine. Um, again, right, they were very much chasing Tesla when they did this. And I have to give Ford credit for what it is. It's a good piece of tech. It's actually an excellent piece of technology. So good for you. Uh, it has some of that 
forward functionality laggy stuff going on whatever is what it is uh but otherwise i mean it's pretty good right you hit the the camera button see it's actually not that badly obscured right now and it's good the fidelity is nice like it's you can see what's going on so yeah it's good i like it it works out pretty well um the dash cluster that was a bit of a surprise i didn't know what to expect from this let me poke my nose in here it's it's very small like it is very tiny and this steering wheel actually feels a little small too maybe that's one to the i don't know but anyway uh it is you know it gives you all the information you need there's you, you can't tinker with it too much and maybe that's a good thing you do all your playing on this thing and this just gives you basic information um you know funnily enough the uh the speedometer indicates ground speed can it give you the airspeed too? I'm not sure what that means, but it's pretty funny. I get a kick out of that. Um, <laughs> such a specific thing. And then, yeah, I mean, it just tells you bits and pieces, obviously your range and battery, et cetera. Uh, otherwise you get pretty conventional Ford in the steering wheel assembly here. Wireless charging down there. The wireless charging pad has been a bitch. It doesn't work half the time. The phone on, off, on, off, charge, no charge, charge, no charge. And then this morning on my way out here to find a place to shoot this video, it overheated my phone. It has been a less than pleasant experience, so be cautious of that. I don't know what's going on with that thing. Excuse the bottle of water. Um, center console, etc., as standard stuff. I really like that this is leather or whatever that synthetic material is. It's nice. It's better than plastic, better than piano black. So that's that's nice. I don't know how to hold up over time, but it's got to be better than piano black, right? Yeah. Let's say yes. Shall we drive and talk about what this thing's been like? This has been an interesting week here locally in the greater Vancouver area. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, with the area, we have a history, and it is well documented on social media, of completely shitting the bed when it snows. So this is our first significant snowfall of the year. Could be our last, you never know. It's like late January right now. And we, yeah, we have problems when it snows. It just doesn't snow enough here for us to learn how to handle it. And it turns us into the laughing stock of the nation and perhaps the world. Because the rest of the, the country handles snow just fine. Uh, we are, oh boy, yeah, we just can't do it. We are absolutely hopeless. So we had a foot of snow fall in about eight hours and it was quite the, uh, quite the adventure. Of course, that means everybody stays home, which is great because that means I get to go out and play in the Maki in the snow. And I must admit it was, really the, this car handles itself quite well electronic four-wheel drive it was it was great because i haven't actually driven a full all-wheel drive ev in the snow it was a very interesting experience because electric all-wheel drive is very different than mechanical all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive as it were this thing i tried to <laughs> i went to my work and they hadn't plowed the parking lot so I decided, well, let's see if we can, you know, do some rooster tails, have some fun with it, right? Spin it around, whatever, don't tell Ford. And I could not get it to do it. As soon as you pin it and the car realizes, because it's quite intelligent, that there's no traction whatsoever, it kills all the power. It just feeds you enough to give you a little bit of grip in the snow, and then the car starts to move, and that's it. Maybe there's a setting in there where I could turn it off, or if I turned it into whatever that setting is we'll get to the settings in a minute the drive modes in a minute uh, maybe that would fix it but yeah there's no <laughs> there, there's no hooning around a parking lot having fun with this thing but boy is it grippy i'll tell you foot of snow proper foot of snow did not slow me down in the slightest it was great um you know the usual slipperiness uh when you hit ice because there's only so much you can do about ice but it was fabulous i have to give the car credit for what it is it was great um yeah, so if you're going to spec this thing, do it with the all-wheel drive. It costs a bit of money, admittedly, but uh, money well spent. I think it's about $3,000 Canadian for the all-wheel drive. Just do it. Otherwise, it's rear-wheel drive, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all-wheel drive. It's the best. Um, so that was really neat. I enjoyed that. That was, yeah, this was very, very, very capable in the snow. Not as much fun as, say, a, a, the, the pickup truck I used to drive, but very, very useful, which is great to see. Um, this particular version of this car, when I, I was looking at the window sticker, because they provide us with the window sticker to tell us exactly, most of the time, exactly what's on these cars. And this one, this vehicle, as spec, retails for $83,000 Canadian. Now, there's a very good reason for that. As soon as you pick your job off the floor, I'll explain. 
obviously that's a boatload of money isn't it it is a ton of money for a, for what is a, a compact suv ev notwithstanding you know but there are many many options some with more power uh what i would say is a nicer interior if you go to the sort of the tesla or the, not tesla the hyundai side of things you know you could spend less money and get more car. Now there's a reason, a very specific reason why this car is so expensive. This is the extended long range battery. And did you know that if you want the extended long range battery, you will pay an additional $13,000. $13,000. That's a good used Honda Civic if you want the extended range battery. Should you lose your mind and decide, yes, I want the extended range battery, what does that get you versus the regular battery? And this is my, my primary moan about this car. The regular standard battery is 70 kilowatt hours, which is a standard size battery for a vehicle of this size, no problem. If you fork over your left kidney and pay for the additional extended range battery, oh, this poor fellow is stuck in the snow. That's a Corolla, bro. You don't want to get it stuck in there. Um, back to the topic at hand. But if you opt for the extended range battery, you get 91 usable kilowatt hours. I don't know what all that verbiage means exactly, but 91 kilowatt hours is what you get. That's about 25% more for $13,000. That's very poor value. I was absolutely stunned by that. I just, I couldn't really wrap my head around. I figured, okay, maybe 120 kilowatt hour, uh, 120 kilowatt hours, it'll give you 500 kilometers. Nope. I know it's been cold and that affects range, etc. but you know, brass tacks, I've struggled to get 375 out of this battery. You know, yes, it's winter time, fine, blah, 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 but we drive in the winter, don't we? Um, I, I, I cannot under any sense of logic justify where that price tag comes from and how they expect people to pay that. It is stone cold bonkers and ruins this car for me. It truly does. Um, it's my biggest concern about it. You know, it lends credence to the idea that, you know, all the battery electric cars that we're buying are going to screw us in the end when the batteries are no longer any good and we have to replace them. Um, because I'm, <laughs> if the battery upgrade costs you 13 grand, what is a new battery pack gonna cost you? You know, in eight years when it doesn't hold a charge anymore, how long does your iPhone battery last? I get two years out of my phone and that's it. So that is, a, that is a massive concern, to be honest. I don't know, you tell me, right? I mean, tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, whatever you want to do, you, but explain it to me because I'm not understanding it. And it just doesn't make any sense. I was, I was stunned by that. Um, and that sucks because this is actually a really decent car. You know, fix some of the design elements. Don't make it so futury. Just make it a car. Um, and that battery thing. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. That was tough. Really tough. Yeah. So just get the regular battery if you're going to buy one of these things. Certainly don't do the extended battery because that would be silly. And uh, and yeah, I mean you'll have a decent electric car. I don't know what. I don't know what happens when you got to replace that battery. That's that's a problem. But I guess we'll see what happens in the future. And that's going to do it for us. That's the, uh, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. We'll see you guys on the next one.